Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In the next three videos, I'm going to do a series on silver soldering. I'm going to talk about, in part one, the fundamentals of soldering. That's the science behind what we do. In part two, I'm going to talk about the preparation required to make a good solder joint. And in part three, we're going to talk about the actual application of it. I'm going to actually do some soldering on camera. So let's get started in part one, the fundamentals of soldering. First, let's talk about solder. This is silver solder. It's an alloy. And an alloy is a metal that's composed of two or more elemental metals. And the elements in this alloy are silver, copper, zinc. And this particular solder has some nickel in it. And that's real important. I'll talk about that a little later. Now, we also have the what's called the parent metals. Now, this is an appliance we're getting ready to solder. It's a rapid palatal expander. And it's got, this is part of the solder joint. I'm going to solder here, 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 and here. And these wires are nickel and chromium. And this band, the manufacturer says it's stainless steel. Now stainless steel, steel is made by putting copper, I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, carbon in iron. And then to make it stainless steel, you add chromium. So this is at least an, a carbonized iron chromium alloy, but it could have some nickel in it. We don't know. It could be a nickel chromium um, alloy and they call it stainless steel. So I don't really know what that is, but we know that this is nickel and chromium. So we'll be soldering the filler material, that's what they call this, to this these parent metals here. Now we also use a material called flux. And flux is a boric acid based compound. It's designed to clean and coat uh, because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, got a base, it has a cleansing agent to it or a cleansing ac action about it. And then it also coats it when you melt it, coats this entire area and keeps it from oxidizing. Now, if you're using like a puck machine or a, a laser welder, it's in an argon gas environment. Well, you could do the same thing here. You could put this in an argon gas environment, which is an inert gas, keeps it from oxidizing, and you could solder just fine. But that's a little impractical for this. So we use this flux and create a little liquid barrier over the area to prevent oxidation. Now, there's a difference between soldering and brazing. And the American Welding Society has said that anything that is less than 842 degrees Fahrenheit is called soft soldering or soldering. Now this is a soldering gun and it's used for like electrical component uh, construction and stuff like that. The, according to this manufacturer, this tip gets up to 700 degrees. So that's below the 842 degrees. So the American Welding Society would call using this particular soldering gun soldering. And uh, they would call uh, something like this, which we use pretty regularly in the lab. This gets up, according to the manufacturer, about 2,500 degrees or so. And so that's well above the 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and that would be called brazing. Now brazing, another term for brazing is hard soldering, and another term for that is silver soldering. So we are technically brazing. We call it soldering, but it's really hard soldering or silver soldering. All right, so let's talk about melting points of these metals. And I made a little chart here where we can look at it and talk about it. So we're using silver, copper, zinc, and my friend nickel here. Now, a lot of these silver solders contain this, but you have to look around pretty hard to find one that's got nickel in it. Uh, the melting points, like uh, silver, if you heat silver up, it will melt at this temperature. Likewise, copper, likewise zinc. Now, zinc's got a pretty low melting point compared to these. Nickel, there's not a lot of liquid, a lot of, not a lot of nickel in this alloy, but it takes a lot of heat for it to melt. Uh, I'll talk about this in, in a few minutes. Now, <clears throat> these elements, once they heat up, they will melt at these specific temperatures. But now the alloy, this alloy right here, this solder alloy, is a mixture of these. It has a grain structure of containing all of these, and it doesn't have a melting point. It has an alloy melting range. So, and it's got two terms, solidus and liquidus. And uh, solidus is the highest temperature you can get to and still have it as a solid wire, just like this. Liquidus, 
is the lowest temperature you can go and still have it in the liquid form once it melts. Now between here there's 85 degrees. That is the uh, range, the, the melting uh, alloy melting range and it's kind of a gelatinous, a jelly-like, slushy-like consistency. It's not really solid, it's not really liquid. But that can become our friend and I'll show you about that in just a minute. Now why do these alloys melt lower than the pure metals up here? Uh, these metals, they have one atom throughout the, the entire metal. It's just silver. I mean, you have a little bit of extra stuff in there, but at that point it becomes an alloy. If it's just silver or if it's just copper or just zinc or just nickel, they will melt specifically on target at these temperatures because they are the same atom throughout. And it's a very strong bond. But now if you have these mixed together, the atomic arrangement is less regular and the bonds between each of these is weaker. So the melting point is lower. It's easier to break it down. So that's why you have those variations in the temperature. Now the process for the soldering would be to, I, what I do is I'll heat it lightly, add flux, then melt the flux, add solder, and then cover it with solder and then let it cool. So when I add the flux, I just uh, take the flux and I've got a brush and I'll just uh, you know brush it onto the, dip it in there and brush it onto the solder area. And then uh, if I just put it on there while it's cold and I heat it up, it's, the chances are good that it's going to pool. So if it pools, it will have parts that will be covered and parts that aren't covered. So what I like to do is I like to heat the joint just a little bit first and then put the flux on it and it kind of goes and it just kind of goes evenly over it. And then when I put the heat back onto it, it will melt it and put a nice little coat on that solder area and let it melt in. So then I add some solder. And I'll add just a little bit of solder and the solder will be drawn into these areas between the wires and the bands. And let's look at this one right here. Uh, the wires to get the solder through completely covering these, it's drawn in by uh, something called capillary action. Anytime you put two wires together like that and put a molten material there, the capillary action will draw the solder into the joint. So thanks to that property of, of, uh, of chemistry that uh, we get the solder alloy over the entire area. And now that process is called wetting, uh, sweating when you sweat the first layer of solder onto the metal and completely cold it. It's called sweating and I'll talk more about that in, in a minute. Now uh, to in completely encase the material, we go back to this temperature here that we had, this 85 degree temperature between solidus and liquidus in that gelatinous stage and I want to heat it at that point just at the very low end of liquidus and kind of in this range right here. And what that does is it allows it to just flow and stay away from the point of vaporization. Now this uh, vapor point of vaporization is also the boiling point. That's the point at which you heat up an alloy or a metal and it will actually boil. And uh, the boiling the causes bubbles and the bubbles are because the metal is vaporizing. So uh, I I, I picked zinc out here and put this boiling point of zinc. It melts at this temperature, boils at that temperature. So I don't know what the alloy is. I couldn't find that, what the vaporization temperature is. But it's going to be above this. But, you know, when you look at this, uh, this is, what, like less than 1,000 degrees above that. And if you, so this is going to be, you know, at least probably 1,000 degrees above this. But it, this little torch right here gets up to, you know, that temperature. Uh, so let alone if I get use this torch, which gets up to like five, oh, a little over 5,000 degrees, which I really like this torch, uh, the propane and oxygen mixture will get it up there real hot and I can control my heat. But if I use this, it's real easy, real easy to get into that uh, boiling point and to boil the solder. So I want to try to keep it right in here and I got to be real mindful of it. So if it just barely melts, then that will... Uh, that will accomplish what I want without overheating it and without having it bubble. That's one of the one of the reasons it bubbles. There's other reasons. We'll talk about that later in another video. Now, once it's totally, once the gelatinous or the slushy solder covers this, then I let it cool. I let it bench cool. I don't drop it in water. If you do that, you have uh, 
uh, it, it shocks the metal and it causes it to shrink real rapidly and then the bonds between those uh, grains is going to just rapidly uh, shrink and it will uh, weaken those bonds and make it brittle so we don't do that now the most crucial part of soldering is the sweating now <clears throat> there are two factors in why solder sticks to these metals why does it why does it just roll off why does it adhere what is the what is the cause of the adhesion of this solder to this metal okay there's two factors there's a mechanical factor and a chemical factor the mechanical factor if you were to zoom in real closely here and get microscopic on this you would see porosity in these metals a little bit of surface porosity so when you heat this up put the flux on there and it melts and cleans and coats then you put the solder to it and it melts that solder that sweating process causes the solder to go into that porosity and that kind of hangs on it clings on it's kind of like putting um, um, uh, putting something uh, like uh, putting a separator on plaster it gets into the porosity of the plaster and, and it you know it just adheres to it so um, then there's a chemical uh, property too and that's where the metals come together and it forms what's called a diffusion zone and this diffusion zone is right at the point where the two metals come together the sweated solder and the parent alloy now these alloy elements from the filler material or the solder are found in the parent material and vice versa so you do actually have a chemical exchange of these two metals now that's why I like nickel in my solder because I'm using a nickel alloy here and my solder is a nickel alloy so if there is this intermetallic compound this reaction between the two metals and if it's nickel to nickel it's going to be very very strong it's like the best way chemically you can solder so you get the advantages of the mechanical bond and the chemical bond between these uh, two these two metals now when I uh, cover the joint once it's sweated uh, I can reflux after the sweating if I want I could even let it cool and come back and put the layer on using this um, using this range here right in between here and here trying to keep it there to barely melt the solder onto it <clears throat> and then I try to layer it I try to add it on so that it just barely melts and covers it now what I'm doing is I'm putting solder onto the sweated solder so that's actually technically a welding process but we're not going to call it that we'll just call it part of the soldering process uh, welding is melting two metals together um, so I like to just add just enough heat to barely melt it onto the sweated metal okay that's uh, that's basically it that's kind of the science of what we're going to be doing next week we're going to talk about all the things you need to do to get prepared to, for soldering there's a lot of considerations and getting this ready to go. So we'll cover that then. I'll see you next week.